How do you think about death? Wisdom traditions remind us that death is part of life, and in striving to avoid death, we may fail to live and love. In 2020, the COVID pandemic had us living this tension, nowhere more starkly than in nursing homes. High rates of infection and death for many residents led to well-intentioned decisions to protect vulnerable residents, leaving many desperately isolated. We, as a society, chose to avoid death. But in the process, we denied residents much of what makes their lives bearable and meaningful. The harm of these choices became known with time. For Peter, they were always apparent. For the past five years, his wife Ella has lived in a nursing home where Peter visited almost every day. But COVID restrictions meant he wasn't able to see Ella in person for months. He hadn't hugged her or held her hand. I can't even talk to her on the phone. She's nonverbal. She keeps her eyes closed, so even FaceTime wouldn't work. We're, we were having window visits, so I looked through the glass. But for me, all that represents is I get to see her. I can't really communicate with her. She'll open her eyes, but she can't focus on me through the window. Like other family members, Peter wonders about the balance between preventing COVID and living life. Fear has guided these decisions, he tells us justifiable fear, but fear that nonetheless have led to a single-minded focus on stopping the spread of COVID and a neglect of other harms. Isolation from family and visitors, but also from staff who are busier wearing masks and often fewer in number than before the pandemic. That isolation has meant many residents' conditions deteriorated. People living in nursing homes are secluded, cut off, confused, dying of loneliness. And family members like Peter are not doing well. I'm not coping in a sense because I find I can't concentrate on anything. I can't settle on doing anything. I walk a lot. I bike a lot. I just keep moving. It's, it's on your mind 24-7. You wake up, you go to the bathroom, it's on your mind. Death has the power to clarify. COVID's path of infection and death has revealed many inequities in society. Nursing homes are no exception. Nursing home lockdowns show how much care family members provide. Nursing homes are short-staffed. 365 days a year before the pandemic or anything else. They're very, very short staffed. I'm in there every day, feeding, reading, talking to her. There's probably six other spouses who are there pretty well every day as well. It's at least the equivalent of a full-time staff member. And then, and then all of a sudden with COVID, it's gone. Could we have made other choices? Could we have better balanced the fear of death? with the need for love and connection? It's time to talk about it. If COVID comes back like they're predicting, then, then I may never hold hands with my wife again, ever. Thankfully, since our interview with Peter, promising practices have emerged, albeit slowly and unevenly. Practices that support family members' continued presence while preventing the spread of the virus in nursing homes. But we may pause to wonder why the need for love and connection wasn't better supported in the first place. It may be a question worth asking.